for City Beat, your source for all the latest news on the city of Thompson, only on 1029 CHTF, your radio station. Good morning. This is City Beat. I'm Matthew Higgs, and joining me in the studio, as always, is Mayor Dennis Fenske. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. If you have a question you'd like to ask, try to give us a call at 677-8181. Uh, the water treatment plant public meeting will go on this Wednesday. When and where will it take place, and what kind of questions are the public allowed to ask? Uh, basically, it's uh, it's a public hearing in regards to the operation of the water treatment plant, uh, the changeover from uh, Valet to the City of Thompson operations. Uh, there will be a presentation uh, on the 28th at Council by Valet representatives giving a high-level overview, and then followed with a... Uh, uh, the public uh, offering of, of that information as well. I believe that uh, believe it's at uh, St. Joe's at seven. Um, so be sure and come down and uh, bring all your questions, and we'll hopefully be able to answer all the questions that are available. And I mean, you guys already passed or read through a proposed rate of first reading. I guess it's not going to go through the second or third one this week, is it? Uh, okay, so I think we're probably confused in regards to the wastewater treatment plant in regards to the funding for that, which is two different projects. Uh, the wastewater funding uh, public hearing that we have is to, uh, and that's the first reading we've had in regards to a rate structure, where uh, paying for the debenture of uh, a little over twelve million dollars, that uh, the uh, applicant will be uh, for 75% of the uh, cost covered by consumption and 25% based on frontage. And so uh, it's a public information session on that in regards to uh, how the numbers are calculated, what are the impacts uh, to residential and commercial operators, uh, and uh, then we'll go before or submit our application and uh, see where that goes from there. Okay. Uh, the Association of Manitoba Municipalities uh, got together, and of course you were there. How was the meetings, first of all? Excellent. It's about a thousand delegates from uh, across Manitoba, all the uh, cities and towns and RMs uh, in regards to the uh, mayors and elected officials and the CAOs. Uh, it's a two and a half day conference with uh, lots of interactions. Uh, we had the uh, ministeri ministerial for, uh, board in the sense of the province. Premier uh, Pallister was there with his full cabinet uh, to have a ministerial form. Uh, question and answer period from the delegates. That went really well. We had a resolutions. Basically, the AMM, the Association of Manitoba Municipalities, is our uh, lobby group for that lobby on behalf of our uh, association with the provincial government. So there are a number of resolutions raised and passed uh, to give the AMM mandate to uh, to go forward to the province and lobby on our behalf. And then a number of workshops. We as the City of Thompson prevented, presented a, a workshop in regards to the CSO program, the Community Safety Officer program, uh, how it's going, uh, the annual report and the review process we're going through with the uh, Department of Justice and other communities that are inv and interested in running their CSO program. So it was well attended, got some good questions and we got some uh, uh, good feedback from, uh, from that presentation as well. And then there there was uh, a couple uh, uh, motivational speakers. We had um, John Montgomery, uh, host of the Great Canadian Race, uh, former Olympic athlete, uh, was a great motivational speaker, did a great job. And second, on the second day, we had uh, Jody Miltik, uh, who is a uh, veteran of the uh, Afghan uh, uh, war with uh, Canadian forces. Uh, he's a sniper that uh, unfortunately stepped on a landmine, lo lost both legs uh, back in 2008. But uh, just a tremendous story uh, from his experience, and he's a motivational speaker now doing the tour. He's written a book, and uh, I got to shake his hand after the event and uh, was uh, uh, superly Im impressed with uh, with his story and, and how he uh, conveys uh, uh, his positive story uh, moving forward. Uh, something that came out of the, that AMM meeting was the fact that I guess all the municipalities wanted to the provincial government and the federal government to help with the Port of Churchill. What can you say about that? Yeah, so there was a press conference on uh, Tuesday morning in regards to the uh, Port of Churchill and the Bay Line. Uh, Mayor Spence and uh, Chief Sinclair from uh, OCN uh, were there, as well as all of the uh, mayors from the northern communities. Um, and uh, it was just to bring awareness uh, that the uh, uh, the uh, process is still uh, in place or moving forward from the federal per government perspective and that uh, we're soliciting uh, assistance from the feds and the, and the province in regards to rectifying the ownership issue which is owned by currently owned by Omnitrax. Um, the, uh, the loss of the 2016 grain season 
and the potential loss of the great uh, 2017 grain season. And so uh, things are working. Uh, there has been some uh, funding made available from the uh, uh, federal government, uh, Western Diversification, $4.6 million to assist in the short term, but there is a long-term solution needed in regards to the uh, uh, ownership and operation of both the Bayline and the port, so we'll continue to uh, bring that fight. And the provincial government actually had a throne speech this week, and they said they would try to use uh, Northern Manitoba's resources and try to help the North as much as possible. But uh, we've, I, we seem like we've heard this a lot from the provincial and federal government. Are they actually making an effort this time, or do you think it's just all talk from them? No, actually, I was at the throne speech, and uh, uh, it was nice to hear that they specifically mentioned uh, looking north as a, as a program. They've uh, named a task force, uh, and again, with uh, Chief uh, Sinclair and, and Chuck Davidson from the Manitoba Chamber of Commerce, as the co-chairs, uh, the task force will be looking forward, looking for ways to improve the economic uh, environment in uh, northern Manitoba, including uh, industri industrial development, tourism, uh, and growth from that perspective. So uh, I think uh, we're, we're moving in the right, direc right direction. We're getting some, some traction in regards to the importance of the northern economy. So uh, I'm looking forward to, to working this. Uh, I just saw a fact that Thompson, I just saw this today, is the lowest region in the country when it comes to sales for houses compared to new listings ratio, which means the ratio expressed as a percentage is calculated by dividing the number of sales in a given month by the number of listings that appeared on the market during that same period, which means that this, this moment this is a buyer's market, it's the lowest one. Um, so right now people are trying to sell their houses, not many people are buying into the city. Uh, how do you think the city is trying to, or how does the city fix that and bring more residents into the city? Well, I think you have to sort of step back, and this is a point in time count uh, of a of a situation, and and we're all well aware of the uh, the announcement by Valet to uh, to go to a mine mill operation in 2018. Uh, this is cyclical uh, in the sense that uh, we've been through this uh, cycle before in regards to uh, when previous contracts were negotiated with uh, Valet and and uh, before that with Inco. Uh, there was always a downturn in the in the real estate market uh, that saw uh, people uh, being reserved in purchasing housing or, or being able to sell their homes. This is the same type of cycle that we're going through. There's a little bit of uncertainty in regards to 2018. So I, I don't think it's abnormal. Uh, we know that uh, there are uh, houses moving uh, that are that are priced uh, in, in the, uh, the 200,000 plus uh, range. Uh, we know that the higher end uh, aren't moving as well. That's a smaller market. So uh, I would say that this is a, a point in time shot of the real estate market and, and uh, it's uh, reasonable to expect that it would be slow at this point given the economic environment that we're in and, and the uncertainty. Okay, uh, question from the public. Someone wants to know an update on the petition for painted lines on Cree Road going from four lane to a two lane road. Uh, this, this, the issue itself has been discussed at Public Works many times uh, uh, over the last uh, couple of years. Uh, I'm not aware of the uh, the petition being received. I've heard uh, discussions that there was one forthcoming. Uh, I haven't received it, or I haven't seen. It. I've been out of the city since uh, uh, since Thursday. Uh, but uh, I, I know that uh, the issue will be uh, referred to the Public Works uh, Committee to again discuss and make a recommendation back to Council. That's the process. Uh, the Liga Committee, the Legislative Legislative and Intergovernmental Affairs Committee reviews the uh, agenda items and the requests, uh, and then from that uh, it goes to committee. Committees review the individual issue, which is in this case it's the uh, four-lane uh, painting for Cree Road. Uh, Public Works will review that and then make a recommendation back to Council. Uh, what is on tap for City Council next week? Uh, there's a number of letters uh, from ministers in, the, in correspondence that we've had in regards to uh, grant approvals, as well as uh, moving forward with uh, programs uh, with uh, with the province. Uh, we've got a couple bylaws, uh, second and third reading, um, and uh, we've got a couple reports uh, coming forward as well. So, and the agenda will be set by the end of the day tomorrow. So that may change, but it'll be uh, set by and available by uh, four o'clock tomorrow afternoon. And what's uh, going on in the city during the weekend? Uh, this weekend, of course, there's the big Santa Claus parade, um, and uh, so we're looking forward to that, as well as the uh, uh, celebration of uh, Children's Day. I think I'll be at the TRC or the VRCC uh, in the afternoon uh, to declare that uh, opening, and uh, uh, looking forward to a busy weekend. Okay, and last question. We heard this at the school board meeting, actually, that you were actually at a high school reunion in Winnipeg, an R.D. Parker one. Uh, how was it? And, I, and you told me it was like a while ago, actually, so they just brought this up. 
Yeah, absolutely. It was uh, it was held in July. It was the, the 40th anniversary of the 1976 class. Uh, it was well attended. We probably had uh, 50, 50 to 60 people in attendance uh, from all over the world. We've got people in New Zealand. We've got people in California. We've got people all across Canada. And uh, out of that, and the reason it's came to to uh, note uh, this at this time of year is that as a result of the uh, the donations that we uh, gathered at that event, uh, the committee was able to uh, donate $1,500 to the uh, Safe Grad Committee. So that. Uh, just came forward uh, recently, and so that's why it's in the in the news. But uh, overall, a, a great event, and uh, encourage everyone that has reunions to attend them. It's great to see old uh, old friends and and folks you haven't seen uh, uh, as many as 40 years ago, and in some cases uh, the other day. So it was the full gamut. Uh, I, I ran into people I hadn't seen since 1976, and I uh, was also uh, in the company of people I, I see on a daily basis. We were also saying that I think you're the most famous person out of that class too. Uh, that's again an opinion. Uh, uh, we're, or he could be the in most infamous person, but uh, no, we've got some really uh, quality people that uh, that have gone through the R.D. Parker school system in, in 1976 that have moved on to uh, bigger and better things within their lives, and, and uh, I want to congratulate every one of them with their uh, uh, personal lives and, and success and, and uh, encourage everyone, uh, what, no matter what year, just to, uh, once you get get out of the the high school realm and, and uh, into the next, uh, the next level, to just uh, grasp it and go with it as far as you can. Well, I don't know if anyone could beat the Mayor of Thompson. That's a pretty big uh, spot right there. Uh, that's it for this edition of uh, City Beat. Make sure to join us every Thursday at 1130 to find out what's happening around the city and City Hall. For 1029 CHTM, I'm Matthew Higgs. City Beat. We'll be back next Thursday morning at 1130.